As we continue the series on marine electrical systems, we're going to start with the biggest cables first, since they get the power from the source to where it needs to go. So we got Don Neely to show us what cables to buy and how to make those connections. So let's look at battery cables now. Battery cables come in a wide variety of, of sizes. Here we are looking at the diameter of a 6 gauge. Gauge has to do with the diameter. And when we go to 4 gauge, the diameter gets a little larger. Uh, after 4 gauge is number 2. This is pretty typical on small vessel starting circuits is, is number 2 gauge. This is number 1. Then we go to aught or uh, 1 aught, you'll hear it referred to. And then 2 aught. And you can see the diameter increases as the number decreases. So the one on the top is the 2 aught, and the one on the bottom is the number 6 gauge. And we can see that the 2 aught has a significantly greater diameter and consequently a greater circular mill area than the smaller number 6 gauge. So the larger the gauge of wire, 2 aught in this case, uh, is going to be able to handle a much greater amount of current than a smaller gauge wire, like a number 6 gauge wire. So we need to determine then what the proper wire size is uh, for our uh, application. Cables this size, we're typically uh, using them for uh, engine starting. And the engine manufacturer is actually going to tell us the uh, capacity of the battery we need, as well as the cable size we need to supply to the starter motor. And it's really a function of two things. One is the amperage that the cable has to carry, and the other is the length of the run that that cable has to go. So if we have a starter motor, for example, that draws 200 amps, and the battery is uh, 10 feet from the starter motor, we're going to use one size cable for that exact same uh, engine and starter motor application and the batteries are 40 feet, let's say, from the engine start, then we're going to have to use a larger cable. So let's look at the cable itself. I've got two examples here. One is uh, a copper uh, cable. Looks nice and shiny now. Uh, the other is, it looks silver, but is actually tinned copper. So each of these individual strands is a copper strand that's been then tinned uh, with a real uh, thin coating of tin. And the advantage of this is that uh, I think we're all familiar with copper when it gets exposed to water and particularly salt water turns green. And the challenge there is that when, we, when it does corrode that it adds resistance to the whole process here with the cable. So while this looks great now, uh, in a few years what's going to happen is it's going to turn green uh, create resistance and then we're going to have some problems with our electrical system. So here's an example of a bad connection. You can see the green copper corroding and this is a problem with using just straight copper not tin copper. The copper will corrode and that introduces a lot more resistance to the circuit and that can give us some real battery problems. Our terminal ends are where we have some of our biggest problems on board. Alright so let's do a good connection now. And what we'll have here is uh, actually a number four gauge battery cable. <clears throat> we have uh, tinned copper. Those strands are all tinned. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a number four gauge uh, terminal end. So it's actually marked on here as a number four. And that's going to match the wire gauge that we're going to crimp. And the lug hole actually is going to be a function of what we're going to connect it to. So if we're connecting this to a battery switch, then we're going to want to make sure we have the right size diameter uh, hole in the lug. So what we do is we strip the end of the <clears throat> insulation off so that there's just uh, enough wire exposed to fill the terminal end. <clears throat> and that slides onto there like that and then we're going to use these monster crimpers so we set the cable into that crimper pull that all the way down that makes a real solid crimp connection onto the end of that cable and that's not going to come off so here's a terminal end that's actually been crimped and then what I've done is I've actually cut it off so what we're looking at here is the inside of that crimp. 
And what you can see is that those copper strands have been completely compressed to almost a solid there. So I've got this good crimp. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put a little piece of heat shrink tubing over that so that we keep moisture out of that. And that's going to prevent a lot of other problems that we have on board. So here's our heat shrink. We've got a solid crimp connection. We've got a heat shrink on there to keep moisture out, and that should last a lifetime on board a vessel. So to avoid some of the common problems, if we do great connections, the right size cable, tin copper, uh, we're going to avoid some of the problems that we typically have. And I hope this has helped you understand what's going on with the uh, batteries and the battery cables on board.